Hey guys, it's Tom Shu here, and today we're going to be doing a member requested tutorial. Well, it's kind of a tutorial. Uh, I'll make it a tutorial. A gentleman by the name of Steve Sage sent me an email asking me, Hey, why the heck are my uh, filter options grayed out inside Photoshop? He wants to know what he's doing wrong. Well, he's not really doing anything wrong. Let me show you what's happening here. Working inside Bridge, if we just double click this image, it happens to be an image of Renee Angel. How did I, Angelil, okay, that's uh, Celine Dion's husband. Pretty interesting man, by the way. Anyways, if we look here, we say open image, and we look at a few things here. First of all, if we go to that filter, you can see that like filter gallery, artistic, brush strokes, pixelate, sketch, texture, a lot of those things are blurred out. Now let me explain to you why they're blurred out. If you look right here in this bar, it gives you some information besides just the file name. There's the file name and it's a CR2 so we know that was a raw file. Okay, It's not raw now, it's actually in Lightroom. But there's the size and it's in the RGB color space and it's 16-bit. See that's the problem. Photoshop will not allow you to use all of the filters when images are in 16-bit mode. Now there's some benefits to working in 16-bit mode. For example, if you want to push your images really hard, maybe you've underexposed things and you need to fix the underexposure because you were in raw. If you push it too hard in 8-bit mode, you'll get blocked up uh, high, uh, shadows, you'll get banding, pixelation. Uh, a lot of things can happen. But when you work with 16-bit mode, you can push your files harder than you can when they're in 8-bit mode. So basically, it's like working with JPEG or RAW. Well, not quite, but kind of. However, you always have to consider what is the final use for your images. For example, this image will never be a 60 foot billboard this will only be maybe a print for somebody like a 4x6 or it will be for web work or blog work or something like that so we don't need a 16-bit file and we certainly don't need a file that is look at this image size that's 17 inches long and 5184 pixels wide this is just a huge huge file so let's go ahead and cancel out of that let's close this down let me show you what you can do to to speed up your workflow. We're not going to save anything. We're going to go back to bridge here and we're going to double click again on that photo because I want to launch it in camera raw. If you come down here it's telling me the color space. It's Pro Photo RGB 16-bit. It's a full-size image, a 17, pic 17 megapixel image and it's at 300, DP 300 ppi pixels per inch. If you double click this it's going to launch a dialog called workflow options. Now this gives you your color space so if you want to use Pro Photo RGB, that's fine when you're working in Lightroom and Photoshop and handing files back and forth. Your, your computer monitor is calibrated and it's color managed. However, when you go out into the web, they're not color managed. So if you try to post photos on the internet, for example, inside of, say, Chrome or Internet Explorer, your colors are going to look weird. The reason why is it works in sRGB color space. Also, a lot of labs want to use sRGB, so that's how you would change your color space. We'll change our bit depth to 8 bits per channel, okay? We're also going to resize this image. We don't need that huge file. Let's go to the long side. We'll resize to fit, and this will give you all these drop-down dimensions. And guess what this looks exactly like? It looks like the export module in Lightroom. That's because Lightroom shares camera raw it's embedded inside of Lightroom. Okay, that's how they process the images, and that's the export module. So we'll go to the long side 1600, and we'll change the resolution. Print resolution is 300 DPI or PPI. The screen resolution for an internet is 72. So we'll change that to 72, and we can also sharpen for the screen. And another thing we could do is we can open our files in Photoshop as a smart object. There's a whole bunch of things about smart objects that are great, but one of the things that you might want to know is that you can open this image back up inside Camera Raw and make adjustments again from the layer palette inside Photoshop. So we'll just click OK here. Okay, We'll click Open the Image. Now we can look here in the top and we see it says RGB 8, as in the color space is red, green, blue, and it's 8 bits per image, and we go to Filter, and there we have all of our boxes. None of them are grayed out. So the there you have it. We have a way to unlock all the features of Photoshop by working in the 8-bit space. Now let's close this and let's go back into Camera Raw for a second here. And the reason why I want to do this is, say for example you're processing a bunch of images 
and say maybe you do work inside of maybe uh, Bridge. Bridge is a great program. We'll double click this, open this in. Uh, actually, that was a JPEG. We want to be opening a raw image. Let's go back up here. That was actually a TIFF. So there's a raw file. Notice that it's given us that set of uh, parameters that we input inside that workflow options. Okay, so just by default, it's going to open our files with the right color space, and there'll be the right size, which was that 1600. So we can do a series of images that are all in 8-bit with all of those preset options from the workflow options in Camera Raw. So that's it. Hopefully I answered your question and a little bit more. I want to thank you all for taking time to visit today. And until next time, we'll see you soon.